Well, so the title of this busy video is uh, Why Do Lenses Have So Many Elements? And those are the pieces of glass inside of a camera lens. Why, why do you need more than one? Why, why, why won't one do? You know, if you pick up a physics textbook, it shows you a lens and it shows you light coming in and it shows you focusing to a point and you're done, right? That, that's like, that's, that's, that's what a lens does. So, so one piece of glass must be just fine, right? And you can have lenses that focus to a point or lenses that diverge, um, depending on how, if they're uh, convex or concave, right? So, so why, why isn't this good enough for a lens? Well, they only show you a ideal case. You have parallel light coming in and it focuses to a point. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> I guess the short answer, it doesn't focus to a point. And in fact, it can be quite bad uh, depending if the light's coming in a different direction. So if the light is coming in uh, if you're taking a picture of something over here, right, you have some of the rays going this way, but the, the thing is big, right? Let's say there's a, there's a, there's a person here that you're taking a picture of, right? And you're going to, you can get, you're going to create an image over here. It's going to be upside down, but you're going to create an image right here, uh, where it's focused. And, you know, his belly button will be focused right here, but his head will be focused down here somewhere. So what about the light that comes in from this angle? And gets focused that gets focused to this point what what happens there right is that just as good and you would think from this picture well yeah it works just fine but that's not the case uh, if you look at pictures like this you see that rays that come off axis do not focus at a point they they smear and uh, they focus pretty good here but they get kind of blurry here and they get kind of blurry here and they get kind of even blurrier here and they make this little shape and it's a very distinctive shape and people thought it looked like a, a comet and they called it coma. I guess this is Latin for comet or something. I don't know. But anyway, it's called coma. The, the, the off axis light here blurs. And there's a whole bunch of lens aberration. There's astigmatism and coma and curvature. And there's, there's, there, there, there's, there's, there's a dozen different ways that lenses don't work right. <laughs> and a lens designer has to try to fix all of those things. And so this is one of the things he has to fix. How does he get rid of this coma? How does he get all those rays to focus in just one spot, right? Well, he can't do it with just one piece of glass, all right? And so he goes to uh, more than one piece of glass. So this is what's called a Cook triplet, C-O-O-K-E, Cook triplet. And uh, this came from the, came from England, uh, Taylor, I think Taylor was the, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, this one has three pieces of glass. So this is, this is a, a camera lens and it has three pieces of glass. And if you look at this design, you have, you have variables, you have a curvature. Okay. So you have some radius here, all right? You have a radius here. You have a radius here, radius, radius, radius. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six radiuses. You have some thicknesses. You have a thickness here, a thickness here, here, here. So you have T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. So you have five different thicknesses and you have one, two, three, four, five, six different, six different radiuses. And um, there are other variables here that I'm not going to get into, but you see that you could choose different curvatures and different spacings and it would do different things. And um, the Cook triplet, this is called a triplet, triplet, because it has three elements. These are elements. Each piece of glass is an element, right? Uh, so this is glass, this is glass, and this is glass. And uh, these three pieces of glass make up a triplet. So this is a three element lens, three element, three element lens, one, two, three. So Fancy camera lenses, though, have a lot more than this, but it, it was 
finally understood mathematically that the Cook triplet was the first lens that could correct all of the primary aberrations of an optical system. If you chose all the right curvatures and you chose all the right spacing and you chose the right types of glasses, you could make this thing pretty good. And so you can get a ray trace that looks something like this, where, uh, you know, this is parallel light coming this way, and this is the off-axis light coming this way, and you can see that this gets focused to a nice point, and this gets focused to a nice point, and so they don't have that, they don't have that funniness, that coma, like the picture we have here. This one, this one works really, really good. And so you could make uh, triplet camera lenses very, very good. So this was done back in the, I don't know, 1930s or something. Um, and uh, Cook triplets were just the rage. And so lots of cameras had, had these things. Well, they said, well, why don't we add more? You know, why don't we add a piece of glass back here? And, you know, why don't we add a piece of glass here? And if we add more pieces of glass, maybe we can correct even finer, finer details. And so how many pieces of glass make a perfect lens, right? Well, there's no such thing as a perfect lens, but you can make really, really good lenses by using lots and lots of pieces of glass because it gives the lens designer lots and lots of variables. So here's a lens. This is one of the most complicated lenses in the world. Uh, this is used in photolithography for making semiconductor wafers. You have a, a target and a wafer and you need to expose it. And, you know, when I make those little uh, uh, videos on, on me looking at the 8080 microprocessor or the op amp in the microscope, you see all those little lines and everything. Well, that's done photolithography uh, with a photo, photo, photolith, uh, photolith process. And this is the lens that they would use to do that. So this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 3. Anyway, it's got a lot. It's like 24 elements, right? So a 24 element lens is a very good lens. Um, but this lens kind of cheats. This lens only has to operate at one wavelength. Okay, they use monochromatic light for this, and so it doesn't have any chromatic aberrations that you have to correct for. Other lenses you have to correct for color also, because you need to take a, a black, a, you don't, you're not taking a black and white picture, you're taking a, a, a color picture. So back in the old days, when lenses weren't very good, well, people were using black and white photography, so what they would do was in front of the camera lens, uh, let's, use, let's use this one, um, in front of the camera lens, they might put a red filter. And then the lens only has to focus red light. It doesn't have to focus blue light, and it can make the lens easier, right? And so there was tricks like that. All right, so I wanna talk about one particular, I could talk lens design forever, and I, I don't want to, because I kind of got out of that field. But, um, you know, really nice lenses, this is a, a Zeiss, uh, this is the cross section of a Zeiss uh, 21 millimeter lens. It's a wide angle lens. Wide angle lenses are more difficult to design than telephoto lenses, but that's a different subject. But this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This one has a thirteen. It's thirteen element lens, and um, it might be fourteen. I'm not sure that not this one's split or not. Sometimes they glue the glass together, so it's kind of hard to see the differences. Um, Let's see, I want to get that reflection off of there. So these, these two pieces of glass are, are actually glued together, so, but, so they appear as one here, but you can just barely see it. And these are two, these two are glued together. Anyway, um, yeah, so lenses can be very complicated. This is a very, very, very expensive lens. Um, so uh, what if you don't have a lot of money and you want to, you know, make lenses easier? Well, one of the tricks in lenses, uh, let me draw you a picture of something, because I think it's an interesting subject. All right, now you can see it. So light coming in here will focus here. Light coming in at an angle will focus here, and it'll be a little bit shorter. This is the, this is the plane, and it actually focuses a little bit shorter. And it actually focuses along a curved plane. This is called the Petzval curvature, but um, it focuses along a curve. So there are cameras that bend the film. So if you have the film and you bend the film, then the picture will look better, all right? So there are a couple very famous cameras that bend film. Uh, there's the Minox spy camera. 
okay? That's an eight millimeter film. And uh, that bends the film to make it easier for the, um, make it easier for the lens designer. The uh, Corona Spy Satellite, uh, it bent film. It was, this was an 11 inch uh, negative, big, big film. This is uh, eight millimeters. Um, and a Kodak uh, disposable camera. There was a, 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 a Kodak camera that was a, a, all cardboard. It was just cardboard and plastic. And you took pictures and then you sent the whole camera back to Kodak and they processed the film with a disposable camera. It actually had a curved film plane as well. Um, well, in digital photography, you can't bend the, the film. It, it, it's impossible to bend the, to bend the film. Um, so how do you, how do you, if you're doing digitally, how do you bend the film? Well, in night vision scopes, okay, so night vision scopes have, 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 have glass in them and they have to focus the light and they, and they focus the light onto a, a curved plane, but they have a, a sensor that's flat. And the way that they do that is they have what's called a fiber plate. They have a whole bunch of fiber bundles, okay? And they have these fiber bundles. They have thousands and thousands of glass fibers. And so you, you focus the light uh, onto the surface and then it gets transported, it would bounce in this little, in this little uh, fiber and would end up on a plane. So that's the way they solved it. They have a, a, a curved um, fiber plate. Um, so what about the cell phone in your pocket, the camera that's in there? How do they solve that? Well, um, they solve it in an interesting way. Um, so this is a, uh, this is a standard camera lens. It needs lots of elements to do its, to do its job. Okay. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements. Okay. That's a nice wide angle lens. Uh, and, uh, this is fairly representative of maybe what a, what a cell phone camera lens looks like. You notice that it looks very, very, very different. Um, one of the reasons it looks so different is they're constrained in how, how thick it can be. Cell phones are very, very thin. So a lens designer has to make a very, very thin, uh, a very, very thin lens. And so they kind of smush things in here. Right. And you can see that this piece of plastic here, this is molded plastic, has a really, really weird shape. And, um, you can see that Light's coming in from different angles, and it it, it, it it goes through this lens in different places. It it only uses it only uses this much of the lens for center rays, and it only uses this much of the lens for these angles, and it only uses this much of the lens for these far angles. So each section of the lens could have its own thickness and its own radiuses. And so the lens designer could actually almost design three different lenses for di three different parts of the image and make it work. And so that's what this is. This is called a field flattener. And this field flattener does exactly that. It takes this curved field and flattens it. It, it says, well, you were going to, you were going to focus on this curvy thing and now we'll make you focus on this flat thing. And this is right next, this is the, this is the CCD or, or CMOS imager right here. And so it's very, very close and it has this really wild bends in it and does this flattening for you. So instead of uh, having to curve silicon, which doesn't, <laughs> isn't an easy thing to do, um, it uses this weird shaped uh, thing here. And then the other one's just, this, just, this one just looks like a cooked triplet, right? One, two, three, just like a cooked triplet plus a field flattener. So really that's what the lens designer did here. Um, to, to all smush it down, right? So anyway, there's a little bit of insight why uh, camera lenses look the way they, they are. Now I'll leave you with a little bonus, uh, a little bonus session here. Um, so, you know, we're used to big camera lenses and everything, but these little cell phone lenses are very, very tiny. So this is, this is a little tiny lens. This is a, this is like a little half inch lens. This was for a, uh, a webcam, a real tiny little webcam. And uh, what I did uh, was I sent this uh, lens 
to a, a company in town, and that company uh, uh, embedded this lens in epoxy. So this is, this is clear acrylic. And so they, they encased the lens in clear acrylic, and then they came along with a diamond saw, and they sawed it in half, okay? So that's kind of how you get these pictures, right? They, they saw the lens in half. And um, I had it done with this tiny little lens that I was interested in, okay? And uh, so here's, here's, what, here's a blow up of, uh, of what, I, what I found inside, okay? And so uh, this is a piece of glass, okay? So uh, I need something, let's see. Okay, so uh, obviously you can see the outside with the threads and everything on it, right? And the light comes in here and the, and the sensor will be over here, but uh, let me draw it in. So this is one piece of glass here, okay? So there's, a, there's one piece of glass and here's a piece of glass, right? And here's a piece of glass. This one's a negative, negative curvature. And then here's a piece of glass. Um, and this piece of glass is special. Because it's actually two lenses cemented together. This is called a doublet. So these two pieces. So it is a one, two, three, four, five element design. And I actually took this and measured the curvatures and reverse engineered it, put it into an optical design program and basically reverse, this, reverse engineered this. Uh, and then I could pick out which, which, which types of glass were the best to use in this design and, and things like that. And it allowed me to figure out what, the, what, what this lens designer was doing. So um, anyway, uh, I thought that would be I thought that'd be interesting. Why do, why do lenses have so many darn pieces of glass in them? <laughs>